Folks, we are out here mowing an abandoned business park. Well, that's what you would think anyways. Our business is in this business park. It's the only business in this business park and nobody maintains anything. We've been in here oh, a little over a year now and uh, all the last spring and summer and fall and everything else and then this spring too. And not once have I ever seen a mower come down this road and, and trim up the edges and you've got all the olives and all sorts of shrubs and anything else that you can think of just growing all along the side of the road creeping into the road growing through cracks in the road you name it it's going on so i'm taking matters into my own hands didn't ask for permission i don't even know who to ask permission for right as far as i can tell it is plowed by the township but that's about it uh, the lights that are here are paid for by the the different folks that own the different parcels in the business park uh, which is just you know a, a handful of them um, and all these lots are individually owned and it just looks terrible. Like there's no pride of ownership. And I'm not saying that, you know, we've got our place completely dialed in yet, but we're working on it we're getting there. And it's just embarrassing when you drive back down here and, and see everything looking like it's like a, I don't know, like an apocalypse scenario. So I decided I'm loving this flail mower. I am absolutely loving it. I've been using it at the farm nonstop. I haven't even taken it back off since I put it on there. I just keep finding things to mow and it's just a beast. Um, I love it because it is so nasty and gnarly. It'll just chew through whatever you, you have, but it's also just the setup with the hydraulics on the flail mower so you can shift it out to the side. You can tilt it up to do it vertical. Um, you know, we put the extra hydraulics on the tractor with that hydraulic multiplier to do all these different functions, including getting a hydraulic top link, which adjusts the, the pitch of the cut height too. And I'm just having a lot of fun and so I thought hey great tool let's see how it does over there in taming that that mess that we have going on and of course anytime you're mowing something new you don't really know how to tackle it and so I did the best I could kind of figured it out as I went along I I wasn't sure if I'd be comfortable one wheel up on the grass and one down on the road and you know depending on how the, mo the mower was oriented that you know it took some getting used to but you can see adjusting the hydraulics on the fly to swing that mower out or pull it back in. You got the, the light post to, to work around too and there's trash everywhere. So 
that's something that we've battled since uh, we bought this is folks for whatever reason think that this is a trash dump and they come down here and they'll dump out their truck bed or their trailer or whatever else it is and uh, I guess you just yesterday or the day before uh, folks had taken a whole pile of, of branches and, and limbs and everything else and dumped them on the road somewhere and my guys were um, kind enough to clean that up so I didn't have to worry about that before we got here but I mean there's beer bottles there's beer cans there's uh, all sorts of glass bottles around here and just other trash that I'm hitting. There was a, a steel rod, a steel pole, I should say, that was by one of the light posts that um, I kind of left there for now. I didn't want to mess with that. So that's why one of those posts kind of is untrimmed and that's how I left it for now. And I'm not going to say it's perfect, but it's cleaning it up quite a bit. I'll probably try to hit this one more time late summer, early fall so that it looks better going through the winter and um, the rest of the fall and, and early spring and everything else too. But I think this is the most challenging cut, trying to get some of that autumn olive cut back and the other brambles and briars too in certain areas and it'll be easier to maintain moving forward. You know, again, a few reasons why I love flail mowers more than brush hogs is just their versatility. And I think if you look at this, you could almost mistake this for like a regular finish mower or a zero turn cut, even though we were cutting all sorts of nasty stuff. I mean, the consistency, the finished results of the cut is just incredible. Um, you're able to cut a lot lower, well, a lot cleaner finish at a lower height with a flail mower compared to a brush hog. And it rides on a big fat rear roller, all right? And so while you're, you're trimming really short and on goofy angles and, you know, I've got that concrete curb that I'm dealing with, it's not, I didn't hit that curb a single time with a blade. Um, that roller just keeps everything at least slightly above there. And then at the end, you can see right where the, the concrete and the pavement meet, there was a whole thing of grass just growing all the way down there too. And at the very end, I was like, I'm gonna see how this does. And I lowered it down just about as far as it could go. And again, those blades were not hitting the asphalt or the concrete and it trimmed it down to one or two inches tall and really did a good job cleaning that up too. Something that you're just not gonna do with a brush hog. And so keep that in mind. If you're looking for a tool, maybe to try to be both a finish mower and a rough cut mower, this is demonstrating that capability to do that. And this is taking stuff from, I don't know, one to two feet, maybe three feet in certain areas, down to just a few inches. If you're only chopping off an inch or two at a time, it's gonna do a lot better job even so, maintaining a finished area. And so with that in mind, you kind of have a two-in-one tool. You do your rough cut, your nasty work, and then also do your maintaining and your finished work.
All right, folks, so that's gonna wrap it up for us today. And again, we're highlighting right now this hydraulic fancy flail mower, and we sell a lot more of the manual, the smaller version, but uh, this just happens to be a really good fit and um, something fun to use, right? But for the subcompact tractors, for the small compacts, the funny top, which has a manual offset, they're small enough to kind of just take the pin out and slide it to the, to the right or to the left to offset that. Uh, you start to get to a little bit bigger compact where you have um, normally maybe some more hydraulic options on there, um, can handle a little bit bigger weight. Then you have hydraulic side shift capabilities and, and uh, those mowers are, are start to be too big to want to manually offset. And we're happy to help you kind of guide you to the right mower that's going to best fit your tractor and fit your needs too. So feel free send out an email to us and we'll get you fixed up. So right behind me here, that's where all the magic happens, folks. So we have all sorts of tractor attachments that we are packing up and shipping out every day. You can go right to our website, find what you need for your front end loader or your three point hitch, place your order. Right now we have 0% financing going on, free shipping and get rewards, all sorts of good stuff. Visit goodworkstractors.com. We do all sorts of demonstrations like the one that you saw today with the equipment that we sell, right? We wanna know our equipment, how it works, how it operates, how it functions what it can do and what it can't do. So if you're looking for something, check out the other videos. We have nearly 700 videos right now. So take a look through those if you haven't done so already. I wanna thank you for taking time out of your day to stop by and until next time, stay safe. We'll see you soon.